and you can pop it. pop it or whatever you want. I don't really have to wear a jacket. No. I thought I'd wear a jacket to make my point of expertise. <laughs> I, wear a jacket, I look more expert than I am. So but you know what? Uh, okay, I'm much now more we Right. So now we know you're an expert with the jacket. Now let's hear you without. Now that you have established it. <laughs> but there is a point to be made on that. So first, I'll introduce myself. Right. Uh, William Burns. You know my name. But I'm going to tell you why perhaps I would be considered an expert of what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> Secondly, I'm going to make what I'm going to talk about hopefully somewhat interesting to you. And third, I'm actually going to talk about what I'm here to talk about. Excuse me, just one second. William, do we have your handouts? My handouts are double page. Oh, double page, these. Sorry, cheap. Okay. So, <laughs> I don't need to kill trees. I'm in right, California right. now, no longer my hand. Right. Um, I brought uh, just ten though. Yeah, but I think I we probably should have okay. two more. We can share it. Points, but yeah, I have one. Uh, I've given it to you on soft copy on ecom. Okay. Uh, the hand, yeah. the uh, written and oh, the, uh, and the powerpoints. Right. I just need some glasses to read. This is good eyesight. Good eyesight. Good eyesight. That's one. Open a discussion. I think it's going to be very interesting if we are all academics in the room. I'm usually used to. Uh, uh, speaking with uh, law academics, at, by example, the AALS conference, American Association of Law Schools, or ABA, these kind of conferences. I assume we're all business school teachers here, accountancy school teachers, and so right. forth, academics. Right. Um, You've got the group. Well, I am uh, I'm now a, a dean at a law school, uh, which is uh, a recent thing, this past year. I'm still gelling over whether this is uh, kind of an upgrade or a downgrade. But uh, before that, in my previous life, I was a, uh, I was a tenured academic at, uh, in Miami at St. Thomas uh, University School of Law, um, where I met uh, Dr. Giannis, and of course, Avi and uh, and Sarah at uh, the University of Miami Business School. In my previous life before that, I do have some accountancy background. I I'm not an accountant, but I played one in profession. Uh, I was associate director at Cooper's and Librand overseas. Uh, I was one of the, uh, when there was a talk uh, years ago before Sarbanes Oxley uh, about bringing law firms and accountancy firms certainly overseas together, and the accountancy firms were either acquiring or founding law firms. I was a, uh, an international tax person who was going to start a, a lawyerly firm for Cooper's and Librand overseas. If you all still remember that firm, we're now called PwC, obviously. And uh, in the international tax sphere. At that same time, the reason I had uh, to work in the professional world is because I was an academic overseas. And while in the US, we, uh, we have enough that we can actually afford Starbucks coffees and so forth. Generally <laughs> speaking, overseas, you're paid just enough that you can watch the people get their Starbucks and get for yourself. So you have to go out and earn a living for yourself beyond the, the, uh, the tenure group, at least in most countries. My field of international taxation, to truly uh, be pedagogically sound and, uh, and honest, and as Tom said earlier at the beginning of his, uh, of his presentation, uh, for it to be comparative, required two, two different aspects. One, the faculty itself had to have a comparative perspective, meaning the faculty had to, as it would have to in an international business school setting, if you were teaching international business, come from around the world. Secondly, to be pedagogically sound and honest, my student body were in Johannesburg, South Africa. And while one could say I could get a lot of European students in Holland, I, I wasn't really, I wouldn't be able to attract perhaps Asians or Americans at this time. And uh, in South Africa, while I could attract students from Durban and Cape Town, and perhaps even uh, Botswana, I wasn't going to get the Europeans, Americans, or the Asians. So how is I going to accomplish uh, what I would consider my pedagogical honesty? So I went online. Well, back in 1994, as we recall, there wasn't really a World Wide Web yet. And the internet was still kind of this new, cool thing that we were still playing with as academics. We had access, but not everybody else did. So I started to go online, and I started to figure out whatever that meant. Not because I thought of myself as an entrepreneur in the, in the for-profit sense of the world. I went online because I wanted to have 
I couldn't afford, literally could not afford, to fly faculty in from around the world, and I could not convince students from around the world to come to South Africa. So, um, so I was quite content there, but for my, what I wanted to teach, and for my profession, I did not have the ability to accomplish it there, much less in Amsterdam, much less in America, or much less in Asia, to be pedagogically sound. So, we went online. Because of that, this is who I am now. I am the pariah in the law world who is this year finally becoming recognized as a pioneer. Ten years ago in the United States, 1998, um, the ABA acquiesced to what you would call an online program. It was wholly online. There was no residential components. It was very basic, I would dare say, webcam video uh, technology, much more of an asynchronous chat form and thread. We did have a World Wide Web by 1998. We did have uh, the ability to have asynchronous um, uh, discussions and threads and even some synchronicity. However, this is where I'm going. I was required to think outside the box. I was required because I was not in a classroom and I didn't just videotape myself because we did not have streaming video in 1998. And I wasn't really, in fact, we didn't really even have DVDs being sailed and mailed out and so forth. That came a few years later. I was required to rethink the way that we teach as academics and that students learn as students, in fact, as I learn as a student. I was required to rethink that, to go back into what it meant to be pedagogical, the study of learning. And because of that, I started to look at learning theories. Now, you've, as you said, have gone to law school, you're a lawyer. Uh, have the JD degree. Uh, for those of us who have, who have uh, suffered the boot camp of law school in the United States, for the most part, it's the Socratic method, which is a, an effective tool in certain circumstances. And in many other circumstances, it is a very ineffective tool. And there's certainly a socio debate, uh, generally from the, uh, or most strongly put forward, I think, by the, in my expert opinion, by the uh, feminist uh, socio um, discourse that uh, the Socratic method doesn't work particularly well in the classroom. And uh, so I, I had to look at new ways of learning. That took me on an uh, adventure of discovery of how to best deliver online. Now what's most interesting is that whenever I, I, I think I'm a pioneer now because several other Ivy League or, or very high tiered law schools are now starting to go online with their Masters of Laws or even their JD program. They're starting to use uh, distributive education models. They are starting to have distance learning models. By example, NYU most recently. Um, Harvard's had experimentations with this for a while. For business schools, you all are not gonna find this so um, imaginative. You've, you've been having online MBAs now for probably six, maybe even longer years. But uh, for the law schools, it's, it's been a, uh, been a pariah. Um, until, as I said recently, this past year when other schools have taken the, uh, the initiative to go online. <coughs> now, in my rethinking of what it means to go online, of what it means to, uh, sorry, to learn, uh, that's going to bring me to my topics today. Let me make it interesting for you all, though, as educators, but also as accountants and business people. This is what my paper is based on. I do actually have an economics degree. I, I practice as a, uh, as a two-bit economist. I, I am a, a, really a lawyer and expert, if anything, in international tax. But we're going to look at what that word means shortly. Uh, in, in the context of, of, of accountancy, uh, as you'll read from the data I've given you with uh, footnotes to the, uh, to the sources where I've taken it from, but certainly I'm an expert in this because I read this kind of information all the time. What is the number one area of expenditure right now to hiring forensic?